Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for joining me today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. So I'm going to be sharing a project using my paper engineering enhanced envelopes and pocket cards template book. I'm going to be creating a baronial style A2 size envelope and I'm going to flip to the back of my pocket inside of my template book here. I've got all my samples created and this is the envelope that we're going to be making for this project. This template book is a new addition to my line of templates and I'll leave a link to the video where I share a little bit more information about this template book. These are the tools that we're going to need to create these envelopes. We need a ruler, a pencil, some scissors, something to score your paper with, and a bone folder. And we're going to follow along the steps here. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is cut a piece of cardstock that measures eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then we're going to make some marks on the paper. So we've got four sides on A, B, C, and D and we'll follow along the template guide and make marks on all four sides and then we're going to connect the dots on each side. So we're going to connect the first dot on side A to the second dot on side B and then the first dot on side B to the second dot on side C and so on. Uh, I'm going to walk you through all of those steps and then we'll complete the template by cutting off the little corners as marked in the guide crease all of the folds and adhere the envelope closed and that's how we're going to create a baronial style envelope. So let's walk through this and create one of these envelopes. Now I've got some Gina K Designs Dusty Rose cardstock here and this is a regular eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock and I'm going to cut it down to eight and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. Now you wanna make sure that your measurements here are exact. So I'm just gonna set these pieces aside and I'm gonna make four envelopes the exact same way. I'm gonna cut down my cardstock to the same size and I've got all these scraps left over and I'm going to use these and incorporate them into my card project. So I'm just gonna set those aside and we'll come back to those later on. So I'm just gonna identify all four sides here of my cardstock, A, B, C, D. On side A, we're going to make two marks at four and a quarter and five, then rotate, make two marks on side B, three and a quarter and four, rotate again, make two marks at four and a quarter and five, and then lastly on side D, make two marks at three and a quarter and four. Now here we're going to connect the first dot of side A to the second dot on side B and I'm just going to draw a pencil line to show you that visual there. We'll do the same thing with B and C. Connect the dots of first dot on side B to the second dot on side C. Draw another pencil line to connect those dots and then do the same thing for side C and D connecting dot one to dot two and then finally side D back to side A connecting dot one to dot two. And then I'm just going to go over all of these pencil marks with my score tool. I'm just going to run my score mark right over all of those lines that I've drawn in. And then I'm going to start creasing all of my folds. So I'm going to use my bone folder here to make sure I get good sharp creases. And I'm just folding all of the flaps and creasing all of those folds. And then once the folds are all creased, we, you'll see that we have now outlined the four little triangle flaps as noted in the template guide that's marked red in the template. So we've got these four little corners that we're going to go ahead and snip away. Okay, so I'm just going to cut those away and then you can see our envelopes start to form here. So you'll see that you'll have two flaps. You have two smaller flaps that will fold in as the side and then you've got two larger flaps that will act as the top and the bottom. So those little smaller flaps, we're going to apply some adhesive to those and then fold in our bottom flap and press over top of that adhesive, making sure that the envelope is nice and straight and I'll use my bone folder to press everything in together. 
and we're done. The envelope is complete. Now, if you prefer, you can use a corner rounder to soften up that pointy flap if you like, but I thought I'd just leave it just like this. I'm enjoying the way that this looks. So I've gone ahead and created four of these envelopes because I'm gonna make a gift set of cards for my mother. So I've got four envelopes made. Now I'm gonna pull in my other book and it's called A Book About Boxes and Bags. Now what you'll notice about my templates is that they are color coordinated so that you know what types of projects work together. So in this book, I've got an A2 card box that is also outlined in blue and I'm going to create a top and a bottom of a box. So I'm going to use that same dusty rose cardstock for the top of my box, and then I'll use a heavy base weight white cardstock for the bottom of my box. Okay, so I'm gonna follow along my template guide, and it tells me that my bottom of my cardstock needs to be nine inches by seven and three quarters of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this down nine inches by seven and three quarters. And then I'll just set those scraps aside. I'm not gonna use those right now. And then I'm gonna pop this into my scoreboard. I'm gonna start by making my scores. I'm going to make one and a half inches on all four sides. So it doesn't matter where you start. I'm gonna start on one side and score at one and a half, and then rotate, score at one and a half, rotate, score at one and a half, and so on until all four sides are scored. And now we'll go ahead and crease all of the folds here, making sure that I've got good sharp creases and I'll follow along the template guide and cut away the little areas that are identified. And I'm just gonna trim those little corners because these are gonna fold in and create a 90 degree angle and create a three dimensional box. And so we just wanna help get rid of some of that bulk. So I just trim a little bit away and I'm gonna fold them down and apply adhesive to all four corners. I'm gonna do the same thing to these little tiny flaps here. Fold them over and apply adhesive and then I'm gonna stand up the sides and make sure that my box is nice and straight and apply those little tabs that have adhesive on them to the side of the box. And this is what we should have so far. So, so far we've got the bottom of the box that the envelopes will fit nice and securely inside of. This is a perfect size for those baronial style envelopes. And now I'm going to take that other piece of Gina K Designs Dusty Rose cardstock and I'm going to create my lid. My template guide tells me that I need a piece of paper that measures 8 and 1 8 by 6 and 7 8. I'm gonna follow the same process as I had for the bottom of the box, except I'm gonna make my scores at one inch. So I'm gonna put this in my scoreboard and I'm gonna score on all four sides one inch. Okay, and then the rest of the steps are gonna be the same. I'm gonna crease all the folds and then I'm gonna cut those little side flaps, apply adhesive and glue everything together. Then we have a perfectly fitting lid that sits right on top of our box and then so the lid is not as deep as the box, so it's kind of neat and it gives you that little, you know, three-dimensional look and the little visual. You can see the bottom of the box at this on the side. Looks really cool. Okay, so our box is complete along with our envelopes, and now we're going to make some cards. I've got four top folding A2 size note cards, and then I have the Gina K Designs watercolor pattern paper. And this comes in the most recent Gina K Designs card kit. And I'm just gonna quickly flip through this little pattern paper pack and pick out some papers for my cards. I'm gonna make some quick and simple cards. I'm not making anything complicated. And I'm going to use those leftover Dusty Rose scraps as well on the front of my card. So I'm gonna take this piece here, pop it in my trimmer and trim it at four and a quarter inches. And then I'll rotate that piece that's left over and cut it at three inches. So I've got two pieces of pattern paper that are three by four and a quarter. And these are going to go on the front of my card. And then I'm gonna grab a piece of that scrap Dusty Rose and I'm going to cut this in half so that I get just these random scraps of paper to put on the front of my card. So I'm going to lay these across the bottom part of my card base, leaving a little bit of that white showing, and then I'm gonna take the pattern and put it on the center of the card. 
So this is sort of my layout and then I'm gonna put that together and I've added a few little foil strips above and below that pink paper. And then I'm gonna grab this scrap piece of pattern paper that's left, I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm going to use it on the inside of my card. And then the color paper coordinates with the envelope and everything is all matchy matchy and ties together. Okay, next I'm going to stamp some sentiments. I've got the Gina K Designs So Many Sentiments stamp set and I'm going to get that loaded up onto my Misty and I'm using another one of those Dusty Rose scraps and I'll pick up those stamps with the door on my Misty and I will ink up and stamp with Versafine Onyx Black ink. This is a pigment ink so it stamps nice on the first shot. So I go ahead and trim those out and I'm gonna pop those on the front of my card and that's gonna be it for these cards. Super simple and easy, nothing overly complicated. Just some pattern paper and a little bit of foil, some scraps, and boom, we have these beautiful happy birthday and missing you so much cards. And we'll drop those into our card box. Okay, now we need two more cards. So I've gone back to that pattern paper and I've cut down a few pieces. Um, I don't quite remember the measurements. I know I just cut it up and just started going to town. I wanted to create some large sort of flags, I guess you'd call them, or banners. And I measured this piece of paper because I cut it without thinking. I, I had to go back and measure with a ruler and find the center so that I can create a little bit of a banner. So once I found the center of this piece of pattern paper, I then measured one inch up from the bottom. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and from that corner to that little dot that I measured, I'm gonna make a cut. And I'm gonna do that to both sides and then this is going to create an even banner so that it's not weird or wonky and it's symmetrical. Okay, and I'm gonna lay it on the front of my card like this and I'm happy with that. So I take that banner that I've cut out and I'm going to lay it over top of my other piece of pattern paper. I'm gonna use it as a guide so that I don't have to get out my ruler and get all crazy and start measuring and trying to figure out the square root of pi to get this banner lined up here. So I'm gonna trim that out with my scissors and I'm gonna pop these both on the front of my card bases right over top of that pink pattern paper that I've glued down on the front. And then I'm gonna get some more sentiments doing the same thing. I'm using the same stamp set, the Gina K Designs So Many Sentiments. And I've got another happy birthday and you make me smile. So I'm gonna ink those up with the same VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I'll stamp them, I'll get them trimmed out and popped up on the front of my card. And I'm also using some little scrap pieces laying around to create a little bit of dimension. So as I'm trimming up these cards and panels, I've got extra little pieces of pink uh, Dusty Rose cardstock, and I'm going to use those to help create my dimension. So this way I don't have to worry about foam squares and I'll just stack up those little pieces of garbage essentially and put them to good use. So I'm gonna put those sentiments on the front of my card and then we're done. So we've got two more beautiful cards to add to our box. I'm gonna take the last piece of pattern paper that I have and I'm going to do the same thing as I had done in the first two cards. I put that little extra scrap of pattern paper on the inside of my card just to tie all of my elements together. And then that's it. We have this beautiful note card set ready to gift and make somebody's day. So obviously, like I mentioned, these are for my mom. She hoards all of the cards that I make. Um, she has more cards than she'll ever need or give away. And uh, so this is another set to add to her pile. There's this little scrap left over and I'm going to glue that to the front of my box just to give it a cute little element on the front. And then that's it. This project is complete. No, it's not. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is take some ribbon and I'm going to tie a knot and tie this box together so it's ready to give away. And then this project is complete. Here's a close up look at our finished project and all of the cards and envelopes and box that I made. I had so much fun creating this project using all of my templates, putting those to good use. If you're interested in those books, you'll find them listed in the description box down below. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I appreciate the support as always. Please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video if you enjoyed the content here today. 
Coming up on screen are a couple of videos I think you may enjoy. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!